winter outside the weather is growing cold water is freezing in ponds and lakes animals are sheltering to escape a bit of wind but somewhere in a school not so different to this one all the children are getting very excited about christmas their heads are full of dreams about presents and father christmas <laughs> So excited that they forgot to decorate the Christmas tree that stood neglectively in the stall hall. Mrs. Buzz, the school take care of felt sorry for the tree that was bare and unnoticed. <laughs> I know, I'll decorate the tree myself. I'll make a set of bubbles that will remind the whole school the world story of Christmas. So that night, Mrs. Potts works late in her workshop, painting and decorating the bubble for the school's Christmas tree. <laughs> I know, I know, I hang the, I'll hang the bubble up so that when everyone comes in, they'll see the bubble. The first child to arrive was a little girl called Ashley. They noticed the bubble straight away and stood looking at it. Soon the other children stopped to see what Ashley was looking at. What a beautiful bubble, I wonder who put it there. Look, it looks like a lot of people loading up carts and bags. That's not very Christmassy. I wonder what it's supposed to be. Oh yes, that's a town called Neverall, more than 2,000 years ago. The Roman Emperor decided to hold a census, so he sent orders to all the people to travel back to the place of their birth. What, all of them? Yes, everyone had children. Some of them had very long journeys indeed. Come on, we've got to get going. Do we really have to go? Surely they won't notice if we got to stay. No, the employer said we must go, so go we must. Do we really have to stay with your mother? Can't we find a nice inn or something? We're lucky to have anywhere to stay at all. The boy is going to be packed. Now check you've got everything you need and let's get on the road.
no, it wasn't me. I don't know who made it. Now off you go to class. All that day, the children got on with their lessons. They ate their lunches and played outside of the frosty playground. At the end of the day, they went to the bar to their friends and went home for tea. Most of them forgot all about the Christmas tree and as Ashley couldn't just thinking about the ball ball and who made it. I wonder if there will be another one tomorrow. Yeah, sure enough that evening that Mrs. Potts worked through the night. <laughs> Ashley got to school as early as she could. When she arrived, there was other bubbles already hanging on the tree. Wow, this one is more lovelier than the first. What's the picture this time? It looks like three men on camels. They've got long beards. What, the camels? No, the men, of course. I think this one's about the three kings. They have heard that a very important person was going to be born. They decided to travel to welcome him and take him some presents. They weren't sure exactly where to go, but they have read they should follow a star and that journey would be a long one. Look at the way that that one's scratching his head. It looks like they're completely lost to me. We've got a long journey ahead of us. Are you sure you know the way? Do I know the way? I thought I was following you. Why won't either of you and... Stop and ask for directions. Actually, I do know the way, and I was we must follow a, sh a star in the north. Oh, this is no, no, no. Surely it's a star with a pit in the south. No, you. Well, I think you're both wrong. We should look to the west. Oh, ask Bernard. Bernard says we are old and we should follow the star in the east. Now you really have gone crazy. How on earth would Bernard know which direction we should go in? That's easy. He's my cat, now. He's right. Look, there it is. On the third night, Mrs. Potts left work early to give herself a bit more time to finish the next bauble. Oh, what could all my mind do when it takes all night and I'll get this purple finished for a Christmas tree? Yeah, what could all my mind do when it takes all night and I'll get this purple finished for a Christmas tree? Again, she worked through the night and when she was finished, she was proud of her work. I'm, I'm sure the children will love it. She rushed to the school to hang on the Christmas tree. That morning, many children were straight to the hall anxious to see what that new bubble would look like. Wow, this one is the best one yet. I wonder who is doing this all for us. Look, that 
this picture is of the ma man walking and the lady riding on a donkey. The donkey looked very tired. That's Mary and Joseph. Mary's expecting her baby. They are travelling to Bethlehem where Joseph is born. We've been travelling for so long, Joseph. I'm tired and my back is hurting. Hello, back's hurting. We have to keep going. We must get to Bethlehem before the baby is born. Just think of the warm bed and hot meal that will be waiting for us when we arrive. I'll just settle for a bale of hay. Well, we can stay. 
The only room I have left is in the stable with my animals, but there is no place for a baby to be born. That's better than here on the street. Please take us. And if you're sure, I'll show you the way. At the end of the day, the children left the home, wondering what the next decoration on the tree would look like. Some of them knew the story of the nativity already and guessed that it might be an angel or a bright star. Others thought it might be a penny or a bright yellow digger. Mrs. Potts was determined to make a start on the next bubble despite being more tired than ever. She went straight home and without even stopping for tea, set to work. <laughs> The next morning, as she was so desperate to find out who was behind the Christmas tree decorations that she got up, had breakfast and laid her mum to get her to school as quickly as possible. She just arrived at school, just in time to see the lights turned on in the hall. She peered in through the window, pressing her nose against the glass. It missed its puck, so she's the one who'll be making all the baubles. And then she saw just how and tried Mrs. Potts was looking and she felt sorry for the caretaker. She was about to go to speak to her when the other children started to arrive at school. Immediately noticed a new addition to the tree. Oh look, there's a sheep on it. There's a shepherd too. The hook the other side, but there's a picture of a beautiful fairy. That's not a fairy, that's an angel. Look. That makes more sense, but I don't understand what she has to do for Christmas. A sheep? Ah, oh, yes. Some shepherds. Three shepherds just outside Bethlehem were looking after their flock. It was late, but a dazzling light had appeared in the sky, and suddenly the sky was filled with angels. The shepherd and all the sheep were amazed. Well, the sheep don't look amazed. In fact, they look like he's snoring. Fear not, I bring you great news of joy. What's she saying? I can't hear anything of that loud snoring. I don't know, I can't hear anything either. You must travel to Bethlehem today, of the city of David, and they will be born. This is ridiculous. I know. The first exciting thing you have to sing is, and all I can hear is lazy bones over there snoring away. You will find him wrapped in his fucking clothes lying in a manger. Wake him up for goodness sake or we'll miss it all.
God and peace all on earth. Oh, uh, did I miss anything? <laughs> the shepherds must have been very busy and the three kings must have been very important. So why did they travel so far just to see a little baby? Well, you see, this baby was just not an ordinary baby. You see, born in a humble stable, born 2,000 years ago, was called Jesus. He was God's own son who was sent to bring peace to all the people who lived on earth. When Ashley left school that afternoon, she couldn't stop thinking about how tired Mrs. Potts had looked. It's so kind of Mrs. Potts to make all these decorations for us, but she looked so tired. I wish there was something we could do for her. Ashley thought and thought. She thought about about Christmas and the birth of baby Jesus. She thought about the baubles and then she had a brainwave. I know, we'll make a bauble for Missy Pot. We'll decorate it with baby Jesus and hang it on top of the tree. So when she got home, Ashley ran her friend and asked if they can help with her idea. That evening, instead of playing our favorite games, we, we got together. We brought empty yogurt pots, cardboard pa packets, and lots of sticky wrap plastic. We glued, folded, cut out, and painted. We made the finest bubble we possibly could. When Mrs. Potts got into school in the morning, she was feeling miserable. She was meant to make one last decoration for the top of the tree. But she'd been so tired, as soon as she got home, she fell, she fell asleep. When she arrived at school, the door was open and the lights were already on. She walked into the hall and she was astonished to see the children were already there to meet her. She immediately noticed the bubble with Jesus on the top of the tree and realised what the children had done. She was forced to pull out her large handkerchief and wipe some tears from her eyes. It was a very beautiful treat indeed. Merry Christmas!